legends, I hope you're all fantastic. Today we have a little grab bag of tips and tricks for the Axe FX3. I'm playing my PRS Makati with Fishman Fluence humbuckers at the moment. I've got the USA lead mid gain dialed up at the moment because of course I do. My usual go-to cab and a parametric EQ just doing some tidy up after the cab. This is the tone I'm working with at the moment. <laughs> Absolutely crushing and tight, just the way I like this particular ant model. So tip number one, I was doing some reading about the original boogies, the 2C+, plus, I think, and those amps didn't have a 16 ohm speaker tap on them, but a lot of people would run them into 16 ohm speaker caps. So you would get an impedance mismatch and that would kind of change the tone and the feel of the amp. And as I was reading this, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if the Axe Effects can do that. And like, of course it can. In the Power Ant tab, you have this speaker impedance parameter. So you can turn the speaker impedance parameter up to simulate impedance mismatch. And it's pretty interesting what it does. I mean, if you just set it to two, uh, you're not gonna hear the change until I hit enter. I'll just play a little bit, I'll hit enter, and then you'll hear what it does to the overall sound. <laughs> it really, really kind of smooths everything out there and kind of pumps up the mid-range and just makes it, uh, I think, feel a little bit different as well under the fingers. It's kind of a little mellower and more forgiving. So, you know, I would leave that at one if I was going for the kind of classic, you know, Mark series metal thing that I really, really like out of those amps. But what's really interesting with this is you can do that and you can use the fat switch on there. So let's uh, kick in the fat switch. Let's hear speaker impedance at two and then I'll kick the fat switch in. <laughs> And then you can do the kind of, I guess, kind of classic early 80s boogie thing where you roll down the tone control on your guitar, but you play on the bridge pickup. And this kind of has a little bit of that kind of Santana vibe, even though I started off with like a Metallica Dream Theater sort of Mark series tone, just by changing those parameters. <laughs> interesting there. I've actually been playing around by just kind of bumping this up maybe to about 1.3 or 1.4. So it's, you know, not an accurate simulation of a like, you know, two to one impedance mismatch or anything like that, but it just kind of smooths stuff out just enough for my taste. Let's hear that. <laughs> Alrighty, that's a really fun one to play around with if you're kind of more into the vintage style tones with the Mark series amps. I think you really, really like it and it works great on just about anything. And if you've got a clean tone that's kind of not fat enough for your liking, play it around with some speaker impedance mismatch on there. It is a kind of deep dive parameter. You don't have to do it, but it is one of those fun ones to play around with if you want to mimic some real world behavior. The next little trick, just while we kind of live here on this amp, maybe I'll add the fat switch and the input boost is using the plex delay block to give you like a kind of circular style delay effect. I was playing around with this today and you get something kind of really, really interesting where you know the classic like lexicon style circular delays, which you can do with the multi-tap delay, kind of go like left, right, center. So you get this interesting, you know, consistent rotation to the delays. Maybe I'll put it that way, but uh, where is this? I call this an Escher delay because we have three delays in here, a quarter note, an eighth note, and a dotted quarter note delay on there, but they kind of rotate in one direction and then they rotate back in the other, which kind of reminded me for whatever reason of like a Mobius strip style thing. Like you just keep going around, but the, uh, I guess, perceived direction is different. So anyway, that's just me. 
have a listen to it. What have we done? Uh, we've got the diffusion on zero. The decay time is at three seconds. No pre-delay, lots of high cut, no input diffusion. Uh, is there any modulation? Kind of nothing else going on. I've just set those delays up as they are and I'm letting the whole like feedback matrix of the plex delay do its thing. You get this. <laughs> Realistically, I would play with this with the mix down around 30%, and I would probably add a little bit of diffusion, maybe like 20% or something like that, just so it kind of starts to smear out and get reverby. But it's another great example of how flexible the Plex delay block is. Uh, the Plex delay, the Mega Tap, and the Multi Tap, the Mega Tap and the Multi Tap just had. Uh, a lot of new effect types added, and we will look into some of the mega tap ones in a second, but they're just incredibly versatile blocks. They can do so much. They can do like reverby things, modulation things. They can do these kind of dimensional multi-tap delays as well. It's really, really lovely. So I'm gonna play a little bit with this and then we're gonna move over to a clean sound and I wanna show off some of the pitch reverbs and also some bloom style reverbs. <laughs> Here's my clean sound with a bunch of compression on the Band Commander amp model. Alrighty, let's add a reverb block in here. Let's go reverb. Oh, I did reverb two. You could use reverb one, why not? But I clicked the wrong one. Uh, let's turn the mix up to 100% because we're running it in parallel. We'll set the bypass mode to mute effects in. And what we're gonna do is just hear one of the kind of hall style reverbs on here to start with. And then we're gonna play around with using a mega tap block before it to change the like input envelope to the reverb and bloom it. Let's go Asylum Hall. <laughs> Just sounding reverb. Now the whole Bloom style reverb was discussed on the forum recently and kind of the takeaway was there's a lot of ways to change the reverb kind of input envelope but the easiest one is probably to use the mega tap delay which has just been revised and just use the reverb pre-swell setting on here. I'm going to turn the mix up to 100%. Let's have a listen to what that does to just the kind of way the reverb blooms in. <laughs> This is really awesome using one of the big cloud style reverbs as well. I love the Stratocumulus reverb. We'll just leave this mega tap uh, kind of reverb pre-swell where it is. And we get this. <laughs> Yeah, that is 
pretty, pretty awesome to play around with. I think that's going to be the rest of my afternoon. One last little investigation, if you like, is let's just get rid of this pre-swell in here and let's select one of the new pitched reverb types. Uh, I think when I did the last video with the Axe FX, the editor wasn't updated, but now it is. And uh, I've been loving the Ursa Major reverb type in here. If you watch my last Sunday video, this is the reverb type I was using for that jam. But you can just come in here and have a look at the voice pitch shifting. So you have two voices in here. You can set the balance between them. You can set the splice time for the shifter, the overall mix, the direction, any modulation, any feedback, and you can also set the position of the pitch shifter relative to the reverb algorithm. So if you set it at input, this would be like connecting a pitch block into a reverb block. Mm -hmm. Let's hear the same settings with feedback and then with matrix. that intense shimmer that just kind of seems to bloom and bloom. But what I really like with all of these types is basically just an octave up, but then an octave down. So setting the second voice to minus 12. I don't mind a little bit of feedback with this uh, feedback position on here, running the reverb in reverse on one of the voices and forward on the other voice is also really, really interesting and setting the mix around where it is. So I'm just going to kind of play with this little example for a while. You can, of course, add pitch shifting to any of the reverb types in here. So if you have a favorite reverb that you really like, but you want to add some shimmer to it, you can do it this way. So what's happening here? I think voice one is an octave up in reverse and voice two is an octave down forward pitch shifted. Let's just have a quick little play with this. <laughs> is I've got the Atomica High at the moment set up for just a kind of modded Marshall thing. But if you want a kind of room style sim with just the early reflections in there, uh, this is a sort of thing that I associate with a lot of old 80s rack units, most notably like, you know, the Yamaha SPX90 had a bunch of early reflection sounds on there that are really, really great on guitars and just a lot of sources, especially in a mix, is you can bring up your favorite favorite reverb. For example, let's just use the medium room and you can set the time where you like it. So I'm just gonna leave it at stock settings. We get this. Okay, but what you do is you go into advanced and you just turn the late level all the way down and you turn the early level up and you get this. It almost kind of gives you a gated style verb on there. This is great if you're using in-ears and you just want some kind of roomy style energy on there. And it works with a lot of different types as well. In fact, I have a bunch saved in my blocks library, uh, like early reflections one to four, they all sound like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel directly, there are a bunch of links in the video description if you want to buy some of the music I make with my band Ragdoll, if you want to support me directly via Patreon. They're all linked in the video description. If you want to talk more about guitar tone or food and cats or just anything in general, you can join the Discord server as well. Hope you all have a great day. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.